Well, that was silly. Free, Free agency. agency, goodness. Yeah, there was a lot of money spent. Mm-hmm. A lot of money spent. So what else do we do all summer? Well, we fade the Blue Jays. We, maybe we do. Maybe we do. <laughs> also, we check out all the other sports. Uh, you've got the CFL. You've got tennis. You've got so many other US things. U.S. Open's coming up. Oh, baby. yeah. End of August. Sportsinteraction.com slash STPN. Before the game, live and play, or, you know, how your favorite players are going to perform. Or, you know... As early as this week, where your favorite player is going to sign. Uh, doing it right since 1997, Sports Interaction. It's Canada's sports book. Most competitive odds, Sports Interaction, makes it easy to deposit, play, and cash out. Join now and see all that sports betting has to offer. Head to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. That's sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. 19 plus, please play responsibly. Let's talk about the actual big signing in Columbus, the biggest signing of the day. Uh, the man who shook the world at like seven o'clock when all of the TV shows were off the air for hours and all of the insiders were heading to their get their first beer. Johnny Gaudreau decides to sign in Columbus. So he signs a seven year deal, sixty eight point two five million dollars, nine point seven five per year. He turned down a deal. This was reported by Mike Stevens. He turned down New Jersey, who offered ten million for seven years. He turned down the Isles from Andy Graziano, who says the Isles offered him seven years at nine million. And then the Calgary Flames, where he was signed, offered him eighty four million dollars by eight years. That's ten point five million per year. And Johnny Goudreau said no Columbus is my team out of all of these teams, even though the word is he actually wanted to go to the Flyers, who couldn't figure out their cap situation. And he settles on Columbus. Andrew, what were your thoughts? Why did this happen? Oh, I I heard it was he wanted to be closer to family, and I get that, but I feel like that's such an NHL thing. You don't really hear that in other sports. And I don't know, maybe it's just me, but when – the like for me the main reason to be closer to family would be like to have help with kids but for rich people you can just hire help you know for for nine million a season i'm pretty sure you can hire a nanny to to help out with kids uh maybe it's not the same as having your mom there but uh it, it's still help but uh, i feel like most people don't want to be right next to their parents all the time it's such an nhl thing i, I don't i don't get it but at the same time even if he does want to be closer to his family like columbus is not that close to philly like New Jersey is way closer. And I look at like, do you want to play with Jack Hughes or do you want to play with who's their number one center? Jake, Jack Roslovich. Yeah. Sean Corrali, Justin Danforth. Like I, Cole Sillinger's good. I think he's going to be a really good player, but I look at this from Gaudreau's perspective and Columbus's perspective. And I don't understand it because not only does Columbus still have Patrick Line as a restricted free agent, and they have what four million dollars of cap space, three million dollars of cap space remaining. So good luck with that. But I don't see a fit with Gaudreau's playing style per se. Like I could see him and Line fitting together on a power play, but not at even strength. It's interesting as well that Yarmo Kekalainen feels like this is now the season. Uh, this is the season to go for the big fish and get Goudreau in Columbus because the lineup is apparently ready to contend. Like, this is the move you make when you're you're on the cusp and then you got to bring the guy. I think of Tavares coming to Toronto, where it's like that's one of the final pieces of us creating this, this lineup that's going to contend. I don't look at Columbus's lineup with everybody you name there and I say, oh, yeah, this is one Johnny Goudreau away from Stanley Cup contention. They seem like yeah. they need so much more on top of this. And maybe there are more moves to come. But the offense, I don't see it. And the defense especially, that's a bottom bottom of the league defensive core. Yeah, yeah. I, I look throughout this lineup and, you know, part of it is that Columbus doesn't get uh, a lot of press, we'll say. Like, they're not a team that gets a lot of attention put on them. But there aren't very many names on here that I see that are, like, wowing me right like you've got kent johnson and cole Sillinger at both 19 who are going to be good players i think oliver bjorkstrand is a good player like gustav nyquist good player but he's 32 ufa next year jake voracek good player but again way past his prime 8.25 million on the cap for two more years like there's just i don't see a contender 
anywhere here. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. They've got a few pieces, but even the, the guys who are highly paid on that team, I don't think are necessarily players you want to build around outside of Wierenski. Like Johnny Gaudreau, again, I like him a lot, but without two players who can insulate him defensively, historically in his career has been really bad defensively. So like, I don't know where the fit is. Yeah. And Johnny Gaudreau making the decision to go to Columbus says so much about the organizations that he didn't want to go to like the Islanders. Okay. It's less money. That's what they offered only 9 million by seven. I guess like for there, you could say he, he took a little bit more money to go to Columbus, but on the table from the devils and especially on the table from Calgary was so many more millions over the length of this contract. Calgary We'll get into a little bit more after we dissect Goudreau's decision-making. But New Jersey, like, the team is there. This is the situation where I say a Goudreau puts them into real contention in the Metro Division. 100%. And he decided against the situation there to go to Columbus. So what do you think this says about the New, Jer- New Jersey system and the players and maybe the managers I don't know. I would have, I, if I'm making that decision, I probably go with New Jersey over all of these teams. Yeah, I do too. I wonder if if it's a combination of maybe New Jersey's general manager is not very convincing and maybe Johnny Gaudreau is not necessarily up on like on the up on like how good New Jersey's core is going forward. Like Jack Hughes and Nico Hishi are down the middle. Simon Nemich is going to come in soon. Dougie Hamilton is still great. Damon Severson's a great player. Like, there's a lot to like about New Jersey. They still need goaltending, I think. Mm-hmm. But overall, this is a team that's very clearly on the rise. But I guess maybe he looked at the fact that New Jersey has four players signed past 2023 and was like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is there. It's like, just they, they, got the, they got the young, talented kids locked up. Like the yeah, people who are signed past that are huge and he sure and like Hamilton. Yep. And like you can re-sign Damon Severson next off season. Like he should have looked at this lineup and been like, that's a team that's a lot in a better situation than Columbus. And I guess yeah. Tom Fitzgerald just needs to be a better negotiator. And like Lindy Ruff needs to get in there as well and tell them they have great players. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I that, that has to be the answer, right? It's like you, ha- at the end of the day, it comes down to convincing someone. Mm-hmm. And clearly they weren't convincing enough. And it was pointed out that uh, Lou now on Long Island has missed out on Tavares, Gaudreau, and uh, Panarin. Yeah, in the, la- in the last like since he's taken over as GM. So talk about a guy who has like all the clout in the world who's missed whiffed three times on major free agents to bring them to Long Island. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I think it was uh, Adam Wild in, in one of our group chats uh, who when we were talking about this deal breaking and like Columbus was such a an outlier. We remember that they offered Mitch Marner, I think it was $12 million That's to right. sign him. And then they had Panarin and lost him. They'd also offered Panarin north of $11 million to get him uh, to re-sign there. So I guess this isn't too far out of the realm for Columbus for doing this big fish thing. They've, yeah, they have they, a history. They do have a history, and they, they're trying to make a splash. And I, I guess we should say as much as it doesn't make sense and doesn't really seem like a fit, it's probably good for the Columbus organization to get term on a star player because it's something they've struggled to do their entire existence right like rick nash wanted out uh panarin wanted out seth jones wanted out last off season they have to get yeah. rid of seth jones yeah so getting a star player to sign with term maybe that's like a a signal of a sea change for columbus mm-hmm. and like the complete opposite is going on in Calgary right now. We'll, we'll move on to their situation because it's directly related to everything we're talking about. Johnny Gaudreau left Calgary and he left because he didn't want to be there. He didn't He <laughs> didn't leave because of the contract. Like the, the more money was all there. If you, if you say he made a money decision, that's not the case at all. Yeah. Eight years, $82 million, 10.5 per year is what the uh, 84 actually uh, total is what the Calgary Flames and Trill Living offered Gaudreau And he flat out said no. This team that was in round two of the playoffs, they looked okay versus Edmonton. They couldn't really get it going, but they were in the playoffs and they they looked like a team that is going to contend for a number of years. Like, and did you see the press conference that Tre Living had 
Uh, I didn't, I didn't see about it, but I read like the transcript. The dude was so sad. Yeah. Like you could tell everybody in that Calgary front office is just dejected because this means like who knows what Kachuk is going to do. He doesn't want to sit through a rebuild and his contract is up next off season. He's going to be a you know, uh, UFA. He needs to get his RFA deal done. And I'm sure right now he's looking at a one year deal because he doesn't know what this team is going to be. Where do you think Calgary? How do you think Calgary is feeling right now? How do you think they move forward? I, I'm actually kind of shocked that they didn't make a big splash today because now they have a bunch of cap hit like or cap space to, to make a move to find another big fish. And maybe they're really active on the phones trying to figure out a trade to, to ease the pain a little bit, or maybe they just don't want to overreact. But, you know, a week ago, every sign was that Gaudreau was going to definitely stay in Calgary. Mm-hmm. It seems like all, all the talk was super positive that he wanted to stay, that the flames wanted him, that contract negotiations were going well. And then something happened and maybe we'll never know what happened. And he decided he needed to be closer to home. I mean, still an eight hour drive away and these guys are flying anyway, but uh, it's, it's a weird one. It, it's a really weird one. I feel like the flames right now as an organization are in shock and maybe they won't be able to address it until that shock wears off. I know that they're a dark horse for Nazem Kadri, So maybe that's the answer, right? Is uh, Elias Lindholm goes back to the wing and yeah. uh, Nazem Kadri comes in as their number one center. Or like your second line center is Lindholm, you know? But like yeah. that, if I'm for living, that's what I'm going hard at. That 10.5 is still there. It's not like it went somewhere else. Now you have that cap space to spend on someone else. And if there's one way to rejuvenate the fan base, it's getting a guy like Nas, who's a huge personality, and bringing him into the organization and saying, hey, we lost Goudreau, but now we got a center who's a number one center, and we're going to make him a star. And a guy that said no to Calgary a couple of years ago. Yeah, with, right, the trade, Toronto, uh, with the Brody trade. That's right. Yeah, when uh, when Toronto was trying to ship uh, Nas out of town, he declined a trade to Calgary, if people don't remember that one. And then Toronto ended up still trading him, and instead they went to the Avalanche in a deal that uh, I don't think has worked out too well for the Leafs. No, no. And, you know, Calgary, as you mentioned, they've got some big decisions to make. Manjapane and Kachuk are both RFAs this year, so they're going to both get huge raises. Uh, Milan Lucic, that doesn't really matter. He's a UFA next year. But that's, you know, cap money coming back to them. $5.25 million they're spending on a fourth-line player. But Michael Backlund's only signed for another two years. Elias Lindholm, another two years. Tyler Toffoli, two years. So that team could look completely different in two years' time. 